I guess for me, food, faith and love are so intertwined. Um, I asked my mom this weekend what she thinks when she cooks and she's like, every time I cook, I think about you and your brother sitting down and eating and growing and in every intention and in everything I do is just, I fill it with love because I want that love to translate to you and she learned that from her mother. I remember my grandmother in the mornings during Ramadan waking up um, in early in the morning to make it um, and to make the Kisra and to have that ready so that people like for their fatur when they break their fast they have that ready but I remember it in every day in the morning just every day in Sudan my grandma would be up at like before the sunrise she would be sitting there she would be making that food she would be telling us stories she'd be like go collect some eggs I was afraid of the chickens that we kept um, and I, so for me those memories do keep me warm and that's why that's my comfort food but because I grew up surrounded by love grew up surrounded by this love and this unshakable joy and even though our country was in the middle of war even though our family was like besieged basically um, I never felt afraid because in in my family I knew like undeniably that I was loved that my brothers were loved that we were safe even though our house, was, our house was raided, even though the government would take away my father, my uncles, my mum had to go and get them, or my aunts, people disappeared, people we knew died. It's still, there was so much love, not just in our family, but in our street, in our neighbourhood. Sudanese people, I think, are built on love. That's why in Arabic we're called al Shabat Tayyib, the kind people because like our country is just built on people doing everyday kindness for each other, helping each other out. And I'm just so happy that this is a culture that I come from, a culture where you're taught to love unconditionally. Um, and the, the thing is, for me, faith was always a bit hard because when I was younger, I didn't question anything, but at the same time, my teachers, in, when they tell you these small stories, small stories to start you into religion, they tell you the scary parts first. They tell you the sins and apocalypse and the end of the days, and they teach you to fear God before they teach you to love him, to love them. And so for a long time, I felt that I only held on to my faith because I was afraid of what would happen without it. But then when I started learning, exploring it myself, reading, listening, talking to people, I, I saw that I could find God in the everyday, in just these like small moments where I could find my faith and I could find myself through my faith and that that's a part of my identity that I never have to let go. But I get to decide it on my terms. It's not on anyone else's terms like who I, like, it's not on anyone else's terms how I see God, how I communicate with God, how I express my faith. And that was one of the most empowering moments for me because I could finally be myself and know that there's no right or wrong way to, like, there's no right or wrong way to be a person of faith. I went from fear to faith and that's what I try to do because the world is a scary place. And for me, I exist as a woman, as a Muslim, as black. I'm a minority within a minority within a minority. Um, and I should be constantly terrified, but I'm not anymore because I see, I, I try and see every opportunity as like every, like I try and see every one of my failures as a new possibility. Mm -hmm. And I try and see every every one of them is an opportunity to learn and i think that i see and that's why i try and see god in small places in places where before i would have ignored i, I want to see the magical in the mundane if that makes sense i i try and like look at the trees and think well if they they're still here despite everything then why can't i be here um i see 
my brother's laughing and I think how much of a miracle is that that through everything we're surviving we're laughing I see young children in young children like in playgrounds and I'm just like the fact that we've gone through everything we've gone through we've created families we've created communities and that sense of love is still here even like across an ocean and years my people are still here we're still surviving we're still thriving and we will be that gives me hope that gives that encourages my faith about a year when since like since our arrival uh my dad bought home some balloons um and i was incredibly incredibly homesick like those first few years i i had the same dream the moment since the moment we left sudan i always had the same dream just going to sleep and walking and walking and turning a corner and then finding that familiar street to my grandparents house and then knocking on the door and opening the door and seeing my entire family there that dream just kept recurring it it was there every night when i was in egypt it was there when we arrived and i had really really missed my family so what i did was when i i, I, I had this little pink quran with me all the time that i read from it was tiny it was hot pink i was a bomb i took it everywhere and I read it at school, even though the other kids were just giving me these really strange looks. It was like, no, this is, this is what keeps me grounded. Um, but that day I woke up and I did my own little prayer and dad brought home these balloons to for us to play with. And I started writing notes. And every time I wrote a note, I would blow up a balloon, tie it in the note. And those notes were letters to my aunt, so she could read them to my whole family. And I would release the balloon. And I had every conviction that those balloons, like those red balloons, were going to go all the way to Sudan with my letters. And that my family were going to get them. And that got me through that first year. Every day, that balloon, that letter sending it to my aunt. And when I talk to her on the phone, I'm just like, did you get my notes? And she's like, yes, I got your notes. I'm just like, I knew it. I knew it would get my notes. Um, I think my parents might have low-key told her <laughs> like, what's going on, just like, just play along with it. Um, and I remember that first, those first few months, we didn't have Sudanese food. And I didn't understand Australia, Australian food. I did not like any of this. I was like, I, I want my grandmother's cooking. I want things to make sense. Um, and then one day my mom made mulah al-weka, mulah al which is like with minced meat and okra and everything. And I just, I ate it and I was just in tears because I was like, this is home. Like, and home isn't us like we were all sitting together because my family even now dinner time is family time it doesn't matter what we're doing we're together if my dad or my mom are away they're skyping in for dinner um so just all of us sitting there together i realized this is home and home isn't a place it's a people you're around and i could feel connected to everyone i've left and everyone that was there and because we had people we'd, we'd invited over our neighbors and everything and that was really beautiful i never thought of myself as just an individual i've always thought of myself as part of a family part of a community part of a country i don't i can never get into thinking of just doing something for myself i have to it has to be for other people as well so i guess that's where i find my faith that's where i find i find my love